All right, hi everybody, uh, Ryan back again. Uh, so today we're kind of taking a departure somewhat from our normal uh, truck business, trucking, what's well, kind of trucking business, could, could be kind of related to that and I'll, I'll elaborate on that in a minute. Um, but not repair, kind of <laughs> gonna be a lot of repairs uh, with this, so, but not uh, of the truck fixing or heavy equipment fixing, tractor fixing nature. Uh, so I'm standing inside of a house right now that my father bought uh, for my sister to stay in uh, about 2018, I believe, uh, he bought this for her to move up here and live in and all that because uh, she was a single parent and all that at the time. So uh, he bought it and was just going to rent it back to her. And then um, she decided to move back down in Indiana where we're all from. Uh, so uh, sat for a while then my dad ended up doing a uh a land contract with a guy that he had known had worked for him off and on for his other business and uh it didn't go well needless to say as you, you'll see through this walkthrough and some stuff i'm going to talk about um so i i and the reason i'm talking about this on our channel is i talked to a lot of guys out there some friends and stuff some guys i've known that's contacting me kind of from the beginning since we started youtube and we've kind of built a relationship and all that and um, a lot of guys out there, you know, they want to invest their trucking, you know, millions and all that, whatever you're making out there in the trucking business. A lot of guys talk about investing it into to houses and rental properties and all that. And um, I've been really torn. I mean, I've done rentals myself uh, before. I've had one really bad experience and one not too bad experience. I mean, pretty, pretty good for the most part. Um, so it just, uh, as far as legal lines and all that, um, I don't know, it's just something I'm not, I was really interested in it, like starting to buy, you know, getting multiple properties. And, uh, you know, since, you know, this last, I mean, like I said, the last rental experience wasn't too bad. And we had pretty good people and all that, um, but it's just, is what it is. So dealing with people and all that. Um, and I guess it kind of gets, with the people renting a house, it gets to be kind of an intimate thing, you know, where somebody's living there and it's kind of their home. And I mean, even though it's your house and, and all that. So, um, yeah, it's just kind of a, Thing I'm not really interested in anymore and like I said as I get in more into this house I'm going to show you some stuff of how, how bad it can get um, and then what's really got me in like because we were thinking about buying this house from my dad outright and then fixing it and turning it in and you know then renting it out um, but after the whole uh, COVID thing where the government comes out and say that you can't collect rent um, you can't evict people and you can't um, even go after them for the back rent after the fact um, and then even after that, you had the CDC, which is even, even they're a third party advisory board to the government on infectious diseases and things that basically comes out and somehow puts a rent moratorium out when I like said, they're not a legislative branch or anything. Um, luckily I believe the Supreme court has squashed all that at this point, but it still makes me really nervous. I mean, when you got your, a lot of skin, you've, you've worked hard for your money and you go out and buy a piece of property thinking it's going to, you know, have a little bit of passive income and, and build for your retirement in your future when somebody as it's been proven in the last uh, year, year and a half that, um, you know, somebody can pretty much take your property rates away for the most part. So, um, but anyways, that's kind of my stance on it. And, uh, I'm going to go through this house. I mean, I've cleaned this up. Uh, there was, a lot of beer cans and needles and all kinds of nasty stuff laying and I'm not even going to go into it. It was, it was this stuff everywhere and it's still, still pretty bad. I mean, I, the bathroom, I'm not even going to show you what's in the toilet in there because it is, and to make it worse, what's in the toilet, I'm going to show you the plumbing downstairs. So uh, with that, I'm going to, I'm going to kind of, I'm going to turn my camera around and we're going to do a walkthrough here and I'll show you guys the outside. I brought the tractor and bush hog down. The grass was like four feet high, so I had to bush hog uh, the, uh, the whole yard out here, here in town. But, uh, but yeah, so I, I mean, this guy had worked for my dad. Um, I guess they had a halfway decent relationship, uh, so he thought he could trust the guy. But I guess like three or four months after this guy moved in, he quit paying what his agreed payment was with the land contract. And so I guess evidently talking to the neighbors, the guy got into the, the meth and the heroin, whatever, really bad. And... And it, it, uh, it really shows. Uh, so, um, like I said, you think you know somebody, somebody, you know, not only you've known somebody on a personal level, even somebody that you're not just on a background check in and you just never know what can happen in somebody's lives to where, you know, it could ruin your investment. And this, this, I mean, 
this house is pretty bad. So anyways, I'm going to shut up and uh, we'll start outside. I'm going to turn this around and we're going to walk through here and I'm going to kind of walk through and show you some things and talk about it and, and then we'll kind of finish up at the end. All right, so the grass is pretty tall. I got to do some string trimming yet out here. Definitely going to need to pressure wash the siding. So my sister actually put this granite and this uh, cabinets in here, but they're, as you can see by the, the microwave and the stove, I'm going to have to take all this loose and move everything down and line it up because it looks, it's like three inches off. So uh, stuff all over the floor. Refrigerator smells really bad, but uh, yeah, cause it's the freezer I think is worse. Yeah. Smells, oh, that about made me throw up. <laughs> so these are two bags of garbage. There's like mold on the floor, whatever that is. Carpet is totally destroyed. I don't think I'd even try to clean this after what I seen, what I, after what I picked up that was laying in here. And uh, same as the uh, carpet up here. It's a small house. I think it's only, I think it's under 1100 square feet, um, but it, it'd be a nice little starter home for somebody. And it's, I don't know, a bachelor or somebody like that. So I believe that is candle wax, I hope. I don't know, it definitely looks like somebody may have been doing something there. So something's candle or hopefully not cooking something else up here. But we're gonna go down to the basement here. And uh, that's where the fun really starts. <laughs> Or most of my problems are going to be anyways. I'll show you, I will show you the bathroom, but I'm not going to open that toilet because it's probably one of the nastiest. I don't think I've seen stuff that bad in, in Iraq, what this uh, toilet looks like inside. So, yeah, whatever happened there. I just got the power turned on yesterday. I'll have to grab my light. So I had the water company come yesterday. And we went to, he turned on, he put a new meter on down here and we turned on the uh, water main. Turned it on outside and turned it on in here. And we, he runs back in and, you know, checks the, uh, checks the kitchen sink and uh, he's like, oh, you ain't got no water. So I'm like, I don't know why. I mean, um, so we're going down here in the basement and there's water running everywhere all over the place. So had some copper tubing there that somebody cut off. I mean, this is all black uh, galvanized pipe steel. Um, but then over here on the water heater, that must have been... Uh, copper from here all over to the water heater then it looks like the hot water side that uh, that came out everything else from there must have been all copper because I can't find any any trace of uh, the hot water side so and then here's the really disgusting part so that that line the drain line from the toilet you can see there's a pipe like right up there where the end of my flashlight is. That's all copper too. And it runs over the bottom of the toilet. And there was another line that I guess ran over to the, the sink up there, that vanity. Um, and it goes down, it should have came over to here. I just noticed this today when I was trying to track down the, the plumbing, the hot water and all that. And uh, they actually stole, they took a hacksaw and cut these, these pieces of sewage, sewage line, four inch copper sewage line, maybe three inch. Yeah, it might be three inch, but anyways. Uh, that's all copper up there. So somebody actually cut this section of sewer pipe out and stole it. So now I got to figure all that out to get all this put back together.
And then I don't. They, this is these look like uh, dehumidifiers or something. I don't know why they uh, disassembled these, unless they're in some maybe some type of drug making process or something. Um, something was usable out of there. I don't know. I'm not into that. And then you have this mess here. So yeah, I'd say this is almost worst case scenario um, in, a, in a rental situation here, guys. Uh, I said I was really cautious turning the, uh, it actually looked like there was possibly something copper up here because they, they tried to pull those, pull that stuff off. step outside here and show you guys the shed if I can get the door open so I cleaned this up a lot better than it was um, they had like a steel rim a truck rim which is a good fire pit but I don't know why you'd set it right on the patio because this was a nice nice little patio I mean it still can be if it's cleaned up so they had that, there's broken glass everywhere. Like I said, this, this grass was, was over knee high. So I had to, like I said, brush hog it with the tractor. This door was broken off, they completely torn off. It was inside, I brought it out here. And then you have this lovely mess. Part of a TV, when TVs used to be like furniture. And like I said, for some reason, some, they painted over the windows. They didn't want somebody seeing what was going on in here. There's a bunch of money right there, guys. A bunch of two by fours. Like I, that's that's the only good news out of this whole thing is like it pretty much hit the jackpot right there. Some of those are even treated. So. So, yep, uh, that's the grand tour, guys. Like I said, the only good news out of this is the stack of two by fours laying in there, as expensive as they are these days. So, I, I imagine that AC unit's probably shot. So, like I said, I, I can't believe I didn't say anything in the basement, but they actually didn't take, they didn't take the copper off of that. You know, these copper, there's two lines that run in for the AC. They were, they were real shining. They were, they were like the low hanging fruit in there. And like I said, nobody touched those for some reason. So. But uh, that's it, we'll run back inside here and I'll kind of recap on all this. So like I said, it, uh, that was, that's it there guys. Uh, like I said, it was worse. I've cleaned up quite a bit in here, a uh, more, lot more than it was. So it's gonna be, uh, now I gotta deal with this on top of all the other, all this stuff we're, we're uh, got going on. So I'm um, always hoping um, we could help my dad out and move it for him. And then, you know, we could make some money on top to, cause we're gonna need, Quite a bit of cash to go into our new shop uh, that we're, we the property we just bought. We're building the shop and all that down there. If as you guys know that uh, if you if you watch us and all that. So, um, but uh, this another another thing I have to to deal with with everything else and trying to make everybody else happy out there and and all that stuff. So, um, but the moral of the story is, guys. I mean, um, that trucking money out there is, is hard earned. I know um, I've done enough of it. Um, so it's like be careful. Be careful what you, what you put it into, and um, if you do do something, get into rentals and stuff like that, I mean, be really, 
really, really careful uh, about who you let in or who you make a deal with, land contract or rent or whatever. Because um, like I said, and it took it took him almost two years to uh, to get this to get the house back in in our possession here, to where we could come in and, and assess everything and start working on it and get this thing on the market. Uh, sorry, garbage truck driving by. But uh, so I mean, this is like I said, this is probably I had a bad experience. I had to do an eviction on a guy the first time I rented out a house. And uh, they, they kind of knew the system and knew what they could get away with and lied right to it. We went to court and made a deal with them and they lied right to our faces and, and um, we actually had to go through with it. And the guy knew how long he could stay there. I mean, there's people that are basically like professional renters. They know the system. And, um, you know, in Ohio anyways, with, a, with an eviction, uh, there's a second clause of that, which is like your small claims, like your damages and all that. Um, and the guy didn't even show up for that, so I got my judgment for the back rent and all that stuff. And um, yeah, so uh, then, so I get a judgment for like $2,200 for damages and all this and back rent. And, and then I get like a week later, I get a letter from Akron down there at the uh, US, uh, United States Bankruptcy Court. The guy declared bankruptcy, you know, and then he knows I, I can't even, I ain't even allowed to even call the guy about it. So, I mean, it's, and as far as what everybody else on the list of money that he, of people that he owed money, um, I was one of the, it wasn't even worth my time to pursue it because I knew I wasn't going to get anything anyway. So, um, so it's not only they screw you out of your house and your money and your time. And then when you go to collect and they, they throw that in front of you too. And, so like I said, uh, just uh, I, like I said, I talked to a lot of guys out there and a, a, a lot some younger guys and stuff, and they talk about oh, I want to buy rental houses. Um, like I said I've done it a little bit, and after seeing this I, and what's going on, you know, in the country and the world, um, how they they basically came out and said what you can do or what you can't do with your own property, uh, I don't think it's for me anymore. I don't think I have the stomach for it, especially after this mess in here. So on top of that, so. But anyways, guys, uh, thanks for watching. Um, subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the bell for the updates. Uh, give us a thumbs up, like the video. That's the best way to get uh, the word out there to new people and all that, or get YouTube to, to push our videos uh, to other people. So uh, like I said, I know a little bit off topic today from than what we usually do, but I, I just had, I just wanted to share this with everybody because it's, uh, it's, it's a pretty screwed up deal. So, and I just, I hate to see something bad, you know, somebody else get into one of these deals where you're gonna deal with something like this, so. Um, again, guys, uh, thanks for everything and um, watch out for more trucking videos. I mean, we got uh, finishing up that clutch job and some other stuff coming out and uh, never know what to come up in the future. So um, always something going on. And uh, if you're interested in the farm stuff, uh, check out our farm videos uh, on another channel. My wife always puts the links in there for that as well if you're interested in that type of stuff. Um, so check that out also. So uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.